Hello friends, welcome into the Cowboys Report presented by the Guild. I am Tom Downey. Let's dive into the latest Cowboys rumors. First up, did Dak take a vacation with some wide receivers? I'll give this one four stars. Even though maybe it's not a true vacation, it's more of a Dakcation. There was some work going on there. Dak took some of his receivers to Orlando among the receivers that went. We'll get to those in a second here. But the four receivers went down to Dak to have some workouts before camp in Orlando. The group went fishing today. They practiced yesterday. Here are the four receivers on that trip with Dak. Alan Hearns, Michael Gallup, Deontay Thompson, and Lance Lenore. A common theme there. Three of those guys are new to the Cowboys. They were either signed or drafted this year. And then Lance Lenore is a friend of Dak, so it makes sense those four guys went down. No Cole Beasley among others. I'm sure they're spending time with their family before training camp begins in a little bit. Next up, did the Cowboys have a potential number one wide receiver? Two stars on this one. It actually comes from Tony Romo, and he does make some valid points. So even though I don't believe there's really a number one receiver on this roster, I do understand what Tony is saying here and where he's coming from. He's saying, quote, you don't know that they don't have one. Someone could emerge. And Romo pointed out to his example of Miles Austin. After T.O. left, Miles Austin emerged as a number one, or at least borderline number one wide receiver. So I'll give it the two stars because I don't really think someone on this roster is going to be a, a number one guy. But there are some guys that could become a reliable option for Dak and I think will become options. Alan Hearns, we mentioned Cole Beasley, Gallup, Terrence Williams, if he can get his head on straight after what's been a pretty rough offseason so far. Deontay Thompson, I like Cedric Wilson. They're going to get Terrence uh, or Tavon Austin involved quite a bit. There's Noah Brown, Lance Lenore as well. So I don't think there's going to be a Des Bryant caliber wide receiver on this team. But I think you'll see a wide receiver by committee approach. And at certain points in different games, each individual receiver could step up and have big production there. So I get what Tony's saying. I just don't fully buy into the fact that someone is going to be a number one wideout. Stick with the offensive theme here. Do the Cowboys have a bottom three offensive arsenal? I'm only going to give this one one star. And this comes from ESPN. Bill Barnwell, Barnwell ranked all the offensive arsenals in the NFL. A couple notes here. Offensive line quarterbacks don't count. That's why the Cowboys aren't way higher because the offensive line is the best one in the NFL. Wide receivers were also ranked as more important than halfbacks, which I don't really agree with. And then the Cowboys were ahead of only the Jets and the Dolphins, which I also disagree with for a couple of main reasons. One, the Colts, the Bills, and the Jags were all ahead of the Cowboys. If you want to make arguments about the halfbacks, look, look at the Bills and the Jags and tell me that those receiving and tight end cores are better than, than what the Cowboys have. I am not convinced. I don't like Jacksonville's core that much. I think the Bills have the worst receiving core in the NFL. You're telling me McCoy's the difference between Zeke? That ah, doesn't make any sense to me. So, no, I don't love the Cowboys' offensive group. The offensive line gives it a big boost in terms of the way they'll actually produce. But in terms of pure talent, I can kind of see why... Barnwell and others are low on the Cowboys, but bottom three, I don't agree with that one at all. Next up, do the Cowboys have a top 10 coaching staff? Well, I'm sure this one will result in some firm agreements and whatnot there. I'll give it just the two stars on this one. I kind of get some of the mindset here, but I really am not willing to fully buy in. Now, from a defensive perspective, yes, I do think the Cowboys have a top 10 defensive coaching staff with guys like Rod Marinelli, Chris Richard, who I love, and some other notable coaches out there as well. But offensively, I, I have a tough time believing it. I don't think they should be ahead of teams like the 49ers or the Falcons, and we can bring up the offensive and, and defensive staffs here as well. But I just have a tough time believing it. There's a lot of unprovenness on that offensive coach staff, namely Kellen Moore. It's a whole new group. Let's see how it fares. And frankly, I didn't love the job that Linehan did last season. But on defense, I do really like this group, led by Marinelli, led by Chris Richard. It's a strong group on defense. I think it's just outside top 10. I'm not convinced it's actually a top 10 group. But I do want to know from you guys, do you think the Cowboys have a top 10? 10 coaching staff in the NFL. Give me a, a one for a yes, a two for a no, if you think that's the case there. I lean towards no. I don't think it's that far out of the top 10 because there are some really good assistant coaches, but I definitely don't think Jason Garrett is a top 10 coach in the NFL, so I lean more towards the two on that one. We're getting up to some Randy Gregory talk, and is he going to be reinstated? I'll give this one three stars. I agree with what Bobby Belt reported earlier this week. 
that the there's growing confidence the NFL will rule in favor of Randy Gregory. That was backed up by Brian Broaddus as well. Gregory, if he's to be believed in the reports, are to be believed, he has documentation proving he has been clean for months. And the Cowboys are also hopeful that Gregory will be reinstated. I do think there's a good chance you see Gregory return to the NFL. Now, he officially applied for the reinstatement about two months ago, a little bit under that in terms of the actual days. Has reportedly passed those drug tests for months. And Gregory has played in just two games since 2015. So I'm going to kind of pump the brakes here on Gregory's potential reinstatement for the time being in terms of his actual impact. I do think he gets reinstated. I'm typing in a yes here in the comments section. But I do just want to caution a little bit the overall hype around the Cowboys and Gregory. Some have said five sacks, ten sacks. Dude has not played a whole lot in the NFL and hasn't been actually that productive. So I think he gets reinstated. And in terms of the timeline, it actually comes to our next rumor here. And this is our sixth rumor of the day. Is a Gregory decision coming as soon as tomorrow? I'll give this one just the two stars. Brian Broaddus has said that he thinks the decision will come either tomorrow or next Friday. And it fits within the 30 day or the 60 day timeline for, the, for an NFL decision. But I want to make note of this. I think this often gets lost. The NFL has said in the past that that 60 day timeline to rule is a suggestion, not really a guideline. So I don't think it's going to come quite as soon as tomorrow. But my guess is it comes next Friday on the 20th or around that time frame. NFL loves those Friday news dumps there. So I think that you'll see Gregory come back to the Cowboys. I just don't think it's going to be tomorrow. If it is, don't worry. We'll keep you guys updated throughout the Gregory saga. But in the end, I do think he gets reinstated. But let me know how many sacks you guys think Gregory will have in the comment section. I think a generous over-under is five. Last time we asked this, everyone picked the over. I think anything more than five is a massive success. Yeah, even getting three or four would be a big boost for the Cowboys. So I will keep my expectations low for Gregory in terms of his on-the-field impact. But I do think that that decision is coming soon, and it'll be a positive one. We'll come back with some more rumors from the Cowboys in just a second. But first, a quick word from our sponsor, The Guild. All right, folks, you are watching the Cowboys Report presented by the Guild. I am Tom Downey, and you can follow me on Twitter at WhatGoingDowney for more Cowboys coverage every single day. Moving now to our next rumor, is Travis Frederick the team's most important offensive lineman? Now, maybe some of you guys will think Tyron Smith, and I get that after what we saw last year, but I actually kind of agree with this one. I'm going to give it three stars. I think there's, are, there are arguments for Tyron Smith and Zach Martin as well, but I to, to approach it this way. What happened if Travis Frederick got hurt? I think the Cowboys' offensive line would be in serious trouble because we saw how bad they were without Tyron Smith, but at least now the Cowboys have a Cam Fleming to step up. If Frederick goes down, you're playing Joe Looney or Marcus Martin. I really don't like that idea for the Cowboys, so I'll give it three stars. There are arguments for Martin and Smith, but I kind of do think it's Frederick, who I think is very, very underrated as well. All right, next up, is Zeke going to lead the NFL in rushing touchdowns this year? And I love this idea as well. I'm going to give it three stars. I'm feeling good about Elliott this year. He's not going to have that suspension hanging over his head. The Cowboys are going to run the football nonstop. And in terms of touchdowns, Dez is gone. Witten is gone. Who is now your go-to red zone option? It's going to be Zeke. I think you're going to see a ton of RPOs, a ton of read options in the red zone. And I think when the Cowboys get the ball inside the 10, inside the 20, they're going to feed Zeke more than ever and get him in the end zone as often as they can. Look, Bleacher Report said 14. I could see 16 or more. I think Zeke is going to get a touchdown a game, be it rushing or receiving. He's going to have a massive year. And that 14 number outside of the weird LeGarrette Blunt season would have been enough to lead the NFL each of the past or, or for the past five years. So I think he's going to have a, a monster year. Let me know in the comment section how many touchdowns you think Zeke will have this year. Is it 12, 13, 14, 15, 20 if you guys want to get crazy out there? I'll go with, with 15 or 16 for now based only on rushing touchdowns. I think Zeke is going to have an absolutely massive year for the Cowboys. Speaking of the running backs, that brings us now to our next rumor. To the Cowboys sign Adrian Peterson. This one just won't go away. I'm giving this one the fake news. Bleacher Report came out with their article today. What is one move each NFL team should make? 
Well, if I find the Cowboys, I'm looking for a safety. I'd love a defensive tackle. But no, Bleach reports is they should go sign Adrian Peterson. And they even admit it's more of a publicity move than an on-the-field move. Why? This is stupid. The Cowboys don't need Adrian Peterson. What does Adrian Peterson bring to the Cowboys that the, the Cowboys' current crop of halfbacks don't already have? That doesn't make any sense to me. We'll bring up that, that depth chart here as well for the Cowboys. Zeke, of course, is your number one back. He is the focal point here for the offense. Rod Smith is a good number two. Tavon Austin can play some halfback as well. Bo Scarborough, I know you guys love, but don't sleep on Trey, by the way. He could be an option as well. So for the Cowboys overall, why would you bring in an aging back that doesn't bring you anything on third downs and can't help on special teams? The only way it makes even a little bit of sense is if Ezekiel Elliott gets hurt, and if that's the case, I'd rather go sign DeMarco Murray. The fact is, Adrian Peterson hasn't been all that good the last two seasons. Yeah, he'd be good behind the Cowboys' offensive line, but as of right now, Peterson doesn't make sense for the Cowboys. I don't think he should be signed whatsoever. I don't think he's a fit at all, so I'm typing no. I know some of you guys like Peterson, and I get that, but he's not the same guy he was in his prime. Frankly, I think his career is, is, on, the, is on the verge of being over. All right, folks, I am Tom Downey. Follow me on Twitter at WhatGoingDowney for more Cowboys coverage. I tweet daily there with the Cowboys, so if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up on Twitter at WhatGoingDowney. We'll take a look now at some Cowboys or some safeties the Cowboys could sign. First off, we'll take a look at their depth chart here, and frankly, I think Dallas needs one more guy. Is it a Jeff Heath? Is it a Xavier Woods? A Kayvon Frazier? I like those first three guys. I don't want to, I don't want to roster Showers or Huff. The good news is for the Cowboys, there are quite a few notable free agent safeties available on the market right now that I think makes sense for Dallas. So we'll take you through 10 with emphasis on the top five guys in my eyes. So we'll start things off here at number 10 among free agent safeties the Cowboys could sign, i.e. they're not trading for Earl Thomas in that, in that scenario. So we'll start with Darius Butler. Now, Butler falls into a very common theme here with these bottom five guys. Veteran. Used to play some corner, is getting a little bit up there in age. Now, Butler wasn't as good last year for the Colts. He's, I think, at best right now a number four safety. I think the Cowboys could do better, but I wouldn't hate the addition if the Cowboys brought in Butler and had him be, be an option for them long for this year. He has some positional flex. We know the Cowboys love that. So Butler there checks in at number 10. We're going out to number nine on our list, and that is... Uh, Corey, or uh, that's Ladarius Webb, excuse me, Ladarius Webb checks in there at number nine. Former cornerback for the Ravens, turned 33, had some nice plays last year, but the speed is no longer there. He's an option, again, positional flex, but aging safety, I just don't like it all that much. I think the Cowboys could do better than Webb, but he is an option there at number nine. All right, we'll take you now to number eight on our list of free agent safeties the Cowboys could sign. At number eight, it is Mike Mitchell. And Mitchell, I don't think he has the speed anymore. Now, he was better than, than Webb and, and Butler last year because he was a starter for, for Pittsburgh. But I think at this point in his career, with the injuries and the, and the speed concerns, I don't think Mitchell makes a whole lot of sense anymore for an NFL team, the Cowboys included. We'll make note of him, but I think at this point he's kind of a box safety, and I think the Cowboys could, could A, find a better one, or find a guy that can help more in coverage. So Mitchell's number eight. We'll take it out to number seven on our list, and that is a former NFC East player, Corey Graham. And I'd actually be okay with this one. We're kind of in the, in the, in the area where I would be okay with deciding. Now, Graham is not the same player he was. He is best in a limited snap role as a backup, but I think he'd be a decent number four. Plus, you get the added bonus of, hey, maybe he knows a few plays from the Eagles playbook, and he can share those with the Cowboys. On to a bigger name here at number six, and at number six, it is TJ Ward. Now, I've seen comments and questions about signing TJ Ward. I'll be honest, I think he's lost it. He is no longer Pro Bowl TJ Ward. Now, he said the Bucks didn't use him all that well, which, okay, I guess I can get that as well, but he really dropped off this year. Denver didn't want him. The Bucks had no interest in bringing him back. He was cleared of a, of a marijuana uh, charge from earlier, but... I don't think Ward makes a whole lot of sense anymore for the for the Cowboys. He's just not the same player he once was. And frankly, I'd rather give his snaps, at all of them really, to Kevon Frazier and see if he can become a TJ Ward type player. All right, folks, today's show is brought to you by the Guild. Visit stayguild.com and use promo code CHATSPORTS for 15% off your next stay. They're here in Dallas, so when you come to a Cowboys game, just stay with the Guild. Tell them I sent you and use promo code CHATSPORTS for 15% off your next day. They're kind of like a luxury Airbnb. 
into the top five now here for cow for safeties the Cowboys could sign at number five and we're getting into the players that I kind of like a little bit more than others how about the uh, branch now tore his ACL in November that's a concern could go back to the Cardinals as well but when healthy I think he's a, a borderline low-end starter at least a quality backup so I would like the idea of the Cowboys bringing in branch to be a number four safety and a veteran influence as well for the young guys like Woods Frazier and he doesn't battle yet either, so I wouldn't mind Branch on that end. I like the idea of Branch, the big, big red flag for me, and this is, again, why he's number five on my list. What's the injury situation like? Is he recovered from that ACL? If it is, great, bring him in. If not, there are better safeties and healthier safeties out there on the free agent market. We'll move now to number four on our list here. At number four, Quentin Demps at number four on our list there. Limited three games last year because of a broken arm, but was great in 2016. I think he can at least be a quality backup. Now, maybe 2016 was more of a fluke than anything else, but I think that Demps can still be a good, even a number three safety. He can play some free safety, he can play some strong safety as well, has that versatility. I like Demps more than most because I liked what I saw from with him in Houston in 2016. I think he'd be a good fit. Don't let the stats fool you from last year. He was hurt with a broken arm. That is now healed. I'm kind of surprised he hasn't been signed yet. Sign me up for Quentin Demps. At the very least, he'd be a good backup for the Dallas Cowboys. But I think, however, you can find an actual starting caliber free safety in a very strange year for the safety market. So we'll take you now to number three, who I think is actually the most talented safety available, but I don't think Dallas has any real interest in adding him. That is Eric Reed. He has accused the NFL of collusion against him, and that's why he hasn't been signed. And if I know one thing about Jerry Jones, he's not going to like the fact that Eric Reed knelt during the National Anthem. So I would be very surprised if the Cowboys brought in Eric Reed. I think that for Jerry Jones and the Cowboys, the kneeling is a factor there. Talent-wise, he is at least a number three safety. I definitely think he's among the best 60 safeties in the NFL. He did a little bit of everything last year for the 49ers. I like him quite a bit. In terms of on-the-field talent, Yes, I would like to bring in Eric Reed, but in terms of the fit and with what the way Jerry Jones has made comments about the anthem in the past, I don't think it's going to happen. So should is an A, will they is a no. I just don't think it's going to happen. Into the top two now, and this is where we really reach the, oh, the Cowboys have claimed that the safety market isn't a fit for them. I don't believe it. Trey Boston can play free safety or strong safety. The dude had five interceptions last year. Now, INTs can be a bit fluky, but sign me up for Trey Boston. I, I am stunned this guy has not signed yet. He's a good fit for the Cowboys secondary. Can play some free safety. Can push Woods. One of them can play strong safety as well. I know the Cowboys want to have Xavier Woods be a guy there. But I still think you need depth. What's the downside in signing Trey Boston to a cheap one-year deal? That's all he's going to get right now because he's, he's unsigned. I would love to bring in Trey Boston. We'll get to that that way in here in a second. I think you absolutely should bring in Boston or somebody else we'll get to here in just a second. But coming off a great year, a one-year prove-it deal, sign me up for Trey Boston. I'm typing in that, that one in the comment section. I think he'd be a great fit for the Cowboys. However, I don't think he is the best fit for the Dallas Cowboys. And that brings us to my number one safety on the market. If you follow me on Twitter at WhatGoingDowny, if you've watched the show before, you know it's Kenny Vaccaro. I have been pounding the table for Kenny Vaccaro since before free agency started. You need one more safety. The Cowboys love positional flex guys, and they damn near traded for him not that long ago. So now you're saying he doesn't fit your scheme? The scheme hasn't changed all that much, and you said it before you even hired Chris Richard as well. Vaccaro can play in the Richard scheme. He can be a free safety, strong safety, nickel cornerback hybrid. In reality, he can play the role Xavier Woods did last year. Bring in Vaccaro, play him with Woods and Heath and Frazier. That's a really good foursome at safety. You can bring him in in some sub packages as well if you want to put one at linebacker almost. You can find a role for Kenny Vaccaro. I like him a lot talent-wise. The injury is a bit of a concern from last year. I think he's fine now. He said that he's fine. Sign me up for Kenny Vaccaro. I want him on the Cowboys. I think he'd be a great fit in the secondary. Pair him with Woods, Heath, and Frazier. Let them all rotate. And for those of you that for those of you guys that don't like Jeff Heath, you can start Kenny Vaccaro over him. So I'm typing in that yes. Sign me up for Vaccaro, folks. 
All right, folks, we will be back here on Sunday, so get your questions in the comments section for the upcoming mailbag or tweet them to me at WhatGoingDowny. I'll respond a lot faster on Twitter because i got the mobile pushes en enabled to my phone. So get your comments in. I love having those for the mailbag. We'll see you guys again on Sunday. And if you missed anything, don't worry. We'll put the show on loop here again in just a second. So until then, we'll see you.